Good morning, everybody. Hello, we're here in the woods. Uh, we're taking our friend Henry for a little walk. Um, sorry for the delay. We just had to corral him and get him out here. Uh, but we are set to go. If you guys want to tune in, let us know that you're here. Leave your name and where you're from. We'll be happy to give you guys a shout out. Um, we're here with Kristen as well. Good morning. Um, so we'll be feeding Henry, taking him on a little jaunt through the woods and uh, seeing where he takes us. Um, if we uh, cut out for a second, it's just because we're not very close to the building and not on Wi-Fi. So just bear with us and I'm sure we'll uh, be right back to it very shortly. But um, if for any reason there's any connection problems, that's why uh, we're just connected to data. So um, I'll flip the camera around so you guys can get a good look at Henry. We started him out with some treats. He's very, um, he's in a little bit of a mood this morning. He's really like, I want my food. So, um, so we'll take him on a little walk and see how he does. Good morning, Xander in Plymouth. Good morning, Becca. Hello. Hi, baby. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. So um, Henry is our North American Porcupine Ambassador. He's very, very sweet. Good morning, Carolyn. Hello. Uh, good morning, Zoe. Good morning. Um, so Henry might look a little bit shaggy right now, and that is because he's actually shedding. If any of you all have a, um, a dog at home that is shedding their fur right now because it's getting warmer, Henry is doing the same thing. So his, um, his fur has been shedding off from his arms and his legs, and he's also been losing a bunch of fur back here. He usually, in the winter, will puff up and look like a big uh, baby bear, and then in uh, the springtime, he loses all that fur and sleeks down to a very slim and trim looking boy. So he is uh, currently shedding and maybe a little bit itchy. Yeah, you a little bit itchy? says my hair is falling out. Uh, I know you can hear Maeve, Rebecca. It's so funny. She's in an enclosure right uh, next to us. And whenever she hears us talking or sees us walk by, she'll start talking too because she thinks she's part human. <laughs> so she likes to say hello to everybody. Good morning, Henry. So Henry has been quite spoiled during this quarantine because we are here every day and uh, we have been, you know, just doing lots of projects outside here at the center. We have been actually, are you stretching? Good boy. Uh, we have been able to let Henry just go on long walks every day and that has been really wonderful for him. He, um... He has been really enjoying that. He gets lots and lots of walks. So every time we walk by his enclosure, he thinks he's going on a walk nowadays. <laughs> and um, it's been really nice to get to, um, you know, hang out with him so much. But I know he does miss uh, going on programs for the first couple weeks. He was really confused about why he wasn't getting so much sweet potato. Um, but he loves his walks. And this, the foliage around here has just been exploding. We've got a lot of beech trees in the understory here. That's what you'll see all that like light green. And this time of year, the beech leaves are really perfect for porcupines. They are chewing that um, up like crazy. I think Henry's on a personal vendetta to like eat every single beech in the forest here. Um, and then what's interesting is once the spring goes on a little bit more, once we get into summer, the leaves will turn waxy and papery and actually will be really inedible to porcupines. So they're only really good when they're in this green stage. And then once they kind of mature into their adult um, stage, they are no longer really good for them and they'll switch to a different they'll switch to a different tree. So they actually, um, they actually do switch up their diet quite a bit. You can see all of these quills Henry has on his back here. He's kind of stretching them out. Henry, are you gonna go on a little walk? Okay, bye. <laughs> and this is what we mean when we say Henry's going for a walk. <laughs> He's walking, wandering through the woods, chewing on branches. Um, he does not go very fast. Everyone always asks us if we leash him or anything like that, but no, he doesn't really need one. So I'll just get up and follow Henry while he eats, and I would much rather him eat um, trees and, um, and leaves and things instead of, of sweet potato. So, um, so I'll get to some of your questions now. You can see Henry's actually marking his territory at the moment, uh, just like a cat or a dog would. He um, 
likes to pee on everything to kind of make sure all of the other animals around here know this is his space. Um, so that's what he was doing. Thank you so much, Nancy, for donating. That's so sweet. Uh, we do have donation bu buttons on all of these videos, and we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, thanks, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we have to try to keep Henry away from. This is witch hazel, and it is pretty juvenile right now, so it's probably not as bad as it usually is, but um, it can look a lot like beech. And while you would expect that a porcupine who should live in the wild should be able to tell the difference, sometimes we find Henry chewing on witch hazel, and um, we don't want that. If it just if he eats too much, it can give him an upset stomach. So we do supervise him to make sure he's... This is pretty much the only thing around here. No, Henry. No, no. He's like, but no, I want it. No. I want it though. Come get some. Look at all this no. beach over here. Henry. Henry. No. No. <laughs> and then of course it turns into like the stubborn teenager who only yeah. wants to eat the thing that you tell him he can't eat. So we'll get him some beach. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> Henry. Henry. Here. What's that? Oh yeah. yeah, this is much better. Yeah. See, much better. You're so funny. He really is like an obstinate teenager sometimes. So we just gave him a little bit of beach, but you can see on his foot there, on his leg, he's missing a lot of fur and that's because he's shedding right now. Um, it can kind of make him look a little mangy, but it is normal for this time of year. Uh, let's see. I know you guys have been commenting. Thank you guys so much. Good morning, Carol from Lyman. Good morning from Florida to Bill. Uh, good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, Elena. Oh, uh, the barred owl, Elena, that you're talking about. Yeah, the little baby. He did pass away, but we have actually, we do have another one that's in with um, Byron and Fern, which is really exciting. Who's still alive. Good morning, Alice. Um, yeah, so Alice asks why Henry never really uses his quills, which is funny is he actually was stretching out his quills a little bit when we got him out of his enclosure. We were like, oh, Henry, we never see those quills. So he does sometimes raise them up if he's aggravated, but uh, for the most part, no. For the most part, he doesn't get really afraid of us. He's been in captivity for so long that he really doesn't care too much. Henry. You're so naughty. Let's go over there. There's all Come here. Beach. Look at Henry. Here you go. You want that? No, I just want to eat this thing that you told me I couldn't eat. Come on. No. Let's go. Thank you. Good boy. There we go. You're so much a teenager. He's so funny. Um, yeah, so he is just really not afraid of us. He has been in captivity since he was about six weeks old. He unfortunately was found as a baby in the woods and somebody thought he was an orphan. He most likely was just, uh, you know, a normal porky pet who was left at the base of the tree by mom. Um, they're really too young to be climbing up high into the trees where porcupines spend most of their time and uh, mom will leave them down at the base of the tree under some brush and they will, um, they'll just hang out there for most of the day. Mom will come down once or twice at night to nurse them, but they really don't supervise them too much because they want them to learn to defend themselves. They want them to learn to use those quills. And so Henry, unfortunately, kind of never got to learn that. He figured out People are really nice. People will give you snacks. People uh, will guide you to food that you should be eating. So he um, he lives with us permanently now because he no longer fears people or other predators. So um, if you know a coyote went up to him in the wild, he might not show off his quills or a dog or anything like that. Uh, so he just doesn't have those natural instincts anymore. You're chowing down. Let's see. Good morning, uh, Nevitz in Nashua. Good morning. Uh, if you are going to Acadia, you can absolutely um, visit us if we're open. He is, um, he is usually here dancing to welcome visitors. Um, Henry is, uh, Scott, Henry's about five years old, five and a half now. And um, he's been with us since he was a little baby, so we can say that with some certainty. Um, and usually in the wild, that's about as old as they would get to. They don't 
live very long in the wild, so maybe five or six is normal. But then um, in captivity, they can live much, much, much longer. There's a porcupine down at the Museum of Science in Boston named Cooper, who's like 32. So we're really hopeful that Henry will have a long life with us. Good morning from Georgia. Good morning, Felice. Thank you so much, Nancy. It's so sweet of you to give. Thank you, thank you. We really appreciate it. Yeah, so if anyone is able to give, we have that donation button right there. Hi, bud. What are you doing? Good morning, Ryan from Chicago. Good morning, Heather. Hello. Hello, Genevieve. Hello, Naomi. Um, yes, I know, Felice. He wants to eat the witch hazel. I think it's, you know, it's cumulative, so that little bit won't necessarily hurt him, but most wild porcupines would not be eating that. It might just be that his palate is not developed the normal way because he was raised in captivity. So he's just like, ooh, green leaf. Or maybe they're not tanniny enough yet because they're so young. They're such young leaves, we don't really know. Good morning, Naomi from Rhode Island. Good morning from Willow. Hello, uh, Brendan, are they related to pangolins? Um, no, actually. So pangolins, I believe, are Xenarthra. They're clo cl more closely related to like hedgehogs, or not hedgehogs, um, armadillos. And then porcupines are in uh, the rodent family. So they are closely related to our other rodents that we have around here. So squirrels and beavers, actually their closest cousin. Um, so not closely related to pangolins, but they are closely related to the other rodents that we have in our area. I believe pangolins are in the same family as like armadillos, armored, things like that. But you might have to double check. I'm not up on my taxonomy of pangolins. They do kind of look like pangolins though. And people always say they either look like a cross between like a sloth and a gorilla or a gorilla and like, I don't know, some sort of monkey. So um, people seem to see a lot of other animals in porcupines, I think just because they're so odd with all the quills and the, the rodent uh, teeth and everything. So, but he's making quick work of this beech tree. Good morning. He's so cute. Hello. Uh, good morning, Chuck from Rhode Island. Uh, yes, Donna, he does get ticks. Uh, and we actually have to use tweezers to get them off of him and it's not a fun process. He really is not a fan. Um, so usually he'll get them on his belly and he'll, you know, climb up and we can see that he has one and we'll use a pair of tweezers to get it off. Um, so we've kind of perfected this distract and pull method with, um, we'll distract him with something he likes to eat. So like sweet potato, and then we will, um, we will pull it off with a pair of tweezers. So absolutely does get ticks. I probably have some too right now. We do are very strict on the tick checks here because we do have them. Um, good morning, Erin from Massachusetts, also a rehabber. Thank you guys so much for the work that you guys have been doing. I know a lot of um, rehabbers are really full and um, stretched right now, so thank you so much for rehabilitating. That's awesome. Uh, good morning, Genevieve in Port Orange, Florida. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Naomi. Hi, bud. What do you think? I know, you're just gorging yourself. So you guys can see he has these little hands and I know he, you can see more of his skin right now than you would normally get to. Look at that tummy. Oh my goodness, look at that tummy. Um, just because he is, um, he is in the process of shedding. And um, so he is, he is, you know, doing pretty good, but he's chowing down. Look at all of that beach that you're eating. Oh my goodness. You can actually kind of see that he's shedding. He has some like flyaways on his back, some hair that's coming off. Hi, Mona. Um, I am not sure about how the white-throated sparrow is doing. Um, if that's a patient that was brought to the clinic, I'm not actually, I'm not sure. Oh, so stretching. He just did a really good stretch. Nice job, buddy. He yawned and stretched. Good boy. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how, um, how he's doing, but the uh, the white-throated sparrow is probably a patient that we got in. Hi, bud. What are you doing? You stretching? Are you hungry? Yeah. What's up? Good morning. Uh, yeah, Zoe, we are really lucky to get to hang out with Henry so close up. 
I know you're sleepy tired. Are you so sleepy? Kristen's getting snacks for you. Oh my goodness, you're so lucky. Hi, bud. Hi, what's she have for you? Oh my goodness, sweet potato. Oh, so happy. <laughs> He's the silliest little boy. He like, he really does just want to sleep and eat and sleep and eat and go for walks. Good morning. And this sun is actually really great because sometimes um, it's hard to photograph Mr. Henry because he is all black. But when you get the sun on him like this, he is so cute. Good morning. Hi. Yeah, so uh, please let me know if you have any questions about porcupines, guys. He is super sweet, and he is content to hang out here in the woods all day. So um, so as long as you guys are asking questions, we'll hang out. Um, Henry is, again, one of our rodent friends. So he does have very large um, incisor teeth. So when he comes up for another piece of food, I'll show you guys his teeth. Um, they are all orange in the front and they um, are really important for his ability to chew and crack open nuts and seeds and things like acorns. So he has very strong incisor teeth. What's that chewing? Hi. Okay, you have what another treat? Oh my goodness, so <laughs> you guys might be able to see we did just give him an orange squash, but he also has an orange, hi, orange teeth that are just visible there. And they are orange actually because there is um, tiny little bits of um, iron that are deposited into the front of his teeth. So he gets iron from the food that he eats, from minerals that are in his food, and it gets deposited into the front of his incisors and turns them orange, but it actually also makes them very strong so that he's able to crack open shells of acorns and things without chipping a tooth. And then he also um, will continuously sharpen those teeth down, file them down, and keep them very, very sharp so that he can chew on bark and uh, use those continuously. You, there, there are bugs everywhere, oh my goodness. All right, we have some more questions, that's great. Brendan, there are African porcupines. Yes, they are the ones that have the long, like foot long quills. They're very beautiful. African crested porcupines are those guys. And um, while we don't have them here in the US native, we do have them at a lot of zoos. So you may have seen them before. Um, and they're known to like drop their quills. So um, they can kind of drop their quills. But a lot of people think that porcupines shoot their quills. I think because when they are kind of getting ready to um, to defend themselves. They raise up their quills and show them off and it kind of looks like they're getting ready to fire or something. But they can't actually, they cannot shoot their quills. You really have to, like a dog or something has to come in with its snout and, and put pressure on them and then they'll come out from the skin. Um, Heather, Henry weighs right now about probably 11 pounds. He's not uh, as heavy right now as he is usually. He can get quite a bit heavier in the uh, in the winter, so like up to 13 pounds, 14 pounds. Uh, but this time of year, he is slinking down. He is, um, his metabolism kicks in quite a bit this time of year, so it slows down to conserve energy in the winter, makes it really easy for him to pack on the pounds. I know, there are bugs everywhere, huh? Yeah. Are you itchy? It's so weird to see him like scratch himself like a dog. <laughs> but he is shedding, so I can imagine that his um, his skin is itchy because he's dropping all of that fur. But you guys can see he got an acorn just now. He's going to make quick work of the shell of that acorn using those teeth. Nice job. Um, let's see. Zoe, how does he groom himself with all those quills? He, he really doesn't. Um, so most porcupines don't get to groom themselves too often because they do have those long quills. They do have long nails that they can kind of use to scratch in between his quills, but for the most part they're not grooming back here. And that is why a lot of porcupines come into us with um, issues regarding their skin. So we get a lot of porks that have mange. Um, they come in uh, with mange either covering part of their skin or um, or sometimes the whole body um, So it's it's kind of like mange that you would see on a dog and I know that he does look a little bit 
uh, bare like on his legs and things, but that will grow back. It's just because he's shedding his dense winter fur right now. The first year that we had Henry though, he started shedding like this and we got really concerned and because we didn't really know what to expect yet. And um, we like gave him a bath. We were like, oh my God, he's getting so gross. What happened? And then a week later he was fine. Um, and it's happened every year since then. So now we understand that it's part of Henry's normal cycle to kind of look a little bit naked for a little bit. But, um, uh, but so they don't really groom this part of their bodies. They will, like you've seen Henry do, scratch their belly and things like that. Um, but they don't typically groom that much, so um, so it is tricky. They do sometimes come in with skin issues for that reason. I know you just love to eat beach. Is that the tastiest? Uh, let's see. He is so precious. I know he's so cute. Is Henry an accident recovered member? Okay, that's a great question, Chuck. So. Um, he has been with us since he was about six weeks old. He was originally brought to us as a patient. Um, somebody found him in the woods as a baby. They um, found him at the base of a tree and assumed that he was an orphan because they didn't see a mom anywhere. She was most likely up in the canopy foraging for food. Um, they tend to leave their babies up there for quite a bit of time and don't really... Um, or down at the bottom of the tree for quite a bit of time and don't typically like supervise them or you know they're not helicopter moms so they leave them down there they let them start learning how to use their um, use their quills and defend themselves but a hiker um, found him and assumed he was an orphan so they took him home and raised him up themselves for about another uh, up until the point that he was about six weeks old so probably like five weeks and um and then brought him to us saying you know i think he's ready to go i just wanted you guys to get him a give him a once over and unfortunately he was completely tame he had no fear of people um we had him as a patient for the next six months and we were trying to wild him out make him wild again by kind of um teaching him that humans aren't so great so we would like clap our hands and try to be loud and scary and get him to not like us anymore and it really just didn't work so after six months of, as a patient he decided that he was going to live with us forever oh, nice <laughs> he's so stretchy um and yeah, so we, after six months of trying to wild him out, we decided that he wasn't going to be able to go back out into the wild. And Chuck, that's really why he doesn't take off, because he um, knows that we have food, he likes people. They're also not particularly fast. The only place um, that he might really go that we couldn't get him was up a tree, but we've taught him not to climb too high. Um, so he, he really is very content to just sit and eat forever. Hi, buddy. You got more beach? You're so cute. And you can see how he uses those little hands to hold onto the branch, kind of pull it down towards them. That's so cool that you saw a porcupine yesterday in Vermont. That's awesome. Um, Willow, how long does it take for his quills to grow back? So it does take some time. It probably takes like about a month or so for a quill to fully grow back. They, uh, Their quills are just like our hair. They're um, a modified hair and they, um, they grow from follicles just like our hair does. So it does take some time. Once they lose their quills, um, it does take some time. But they do have 30,000 quills all over their bodies. So they, they do have enough to get through and defend themselves while they're waiting for other quills to grow back. And actually right now he is shedding a lot of quills as well as hair. They grow kind of extra denser quills in the winter to keep them really well insulated. And then they'll shed some of them in the spring. So he does lose quills in the springtime as well. Uh, let's see, what type of leaves are his favorite? From Chrissy. So Chrissy, right now he's really digging this beach. Um, but this, like I said, will get to be inedible in probably like two weeks or so. And um, he will switch over to, um, to oaks and birches and things like that. But his favorite is by far black birch. That's probably his favorite tree ever. Uh, which is very nice because it is an understory tree. It's very fast growing. We have a lot of it around us. So, um, you know, we are, we're lucky. That's one of his favorite treats. And it's just because the leaves are very soft and don't contain a lot of like 
tannins, so they um, they taste pretty good to him. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Terry, uh, good morning. He is not a marsupial. He is a rodent, so he doesn't have a pouch like a marsupial. Uh, the opossum is the only marsupial that we have in North America, uh, native to to our area. So the, mar the opossum is the only pouched animal that we have. All the rest are uh, placental mammals like us. Uh, Chrissy, does he eat maple leaves? So these guys will eat sugar maple leaves. They really like sugar maples. We don't really have a lot of those around us. We have more red maples. And red maples are too high in tannin content for the most part uh, once the, um, the leaves sprout out. So they can eat the buds of the red maple, but they really can't eat the, uh, the leaves. They're just too tanniny and they can actually make them a little sick to their stomach. So, um, so he can get sugar maple. If we ever see a sugar maple around here, we'll absolutely give him some, but red maple, he is not able to have. Um, I know they're so cute when they eat. They just sit, sometimes he'll sit on the branches to kind of keep them in place. And then, um, or he'll put a foot on them. When he gets his platters in the evening, he'll sit on the platter and just kind of hunker down over it and make sure nothing else is going to grab his food. Uh, thank you guys so much for your questions. Um, if you guys are able to, we really appreciate all of your donations on these videos. They really go a long way to making um, our work here possible and to keeping Henry uh, well cared for. We're really lucky to have such a wonderful and generous community who uh, donates. So as always, there's a donate button down there um, that you guys can um, kick. If you have any other questions for me, I would be happy to answer them. Um, and Henry, <laughs> you can see he's like pulling over this whole tree here. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to um, get Henry all packed up and back in his enclosure. And uh, he's probably going to go take a nap. These guys are nocturnal, believe it or not. <laughs> Henry has just kind of switched his schedule around to be active when his people are here. But, um, yeah. Let's see. I think we got a couple more comments, Henry. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure, Chrissy, which animal is next up. Did you, I don't remember. Um, we kind of, we rotate through them, so I'm not... I think it's the painted... Oh, it's the painted turtles tomorrow. Oh, fun. They're, um, they're something. We'll have to see if they'll let us take them on a walk. Um, let's see. Yes, uh, in the Bangor Daily recently, there was a white baby porcupine somewhere in Maine. Yeah, so we do see albino porcu porcupines um, quite a bit in our area. They are just fairly frequent. Um, I think because, you know, they're a porcupine, so the color of their quills doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, so they are a little bit more able to survive being albino. Um, so there was an albino little baby porcupet at the Kennebunk uh, Trolley Museum, Kennebunk Port Trolley Museum last summer. That was very cute and made a lot of headlines. It was so sweet. And we've gotten a couple of um, albino porcupines here at the center where we actually used to have an albino porcupine ambassador named Edna before Henry. Um, that was before my time, but she was so sweet. Um, does he make happy sounds when he eats? Yeah, sometimes he'll go like, meow, 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 but that, those aren't actually happy sounds. I think those are actually like, don't bug me when I'm eating sounds. But sometimes he does go meow, 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 when he eats. It's very cute. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. We're going to pick up Henry and put him back in his enclosure. And I'm sure he'll give us a hard time about that. But uh, we got to go make sure everybody else has their breakfast too. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And we'll be back tomorrow with some more of our ambassadors here at the Center for Wildlife. And we greatly appreciate everybody watching and joining us. So we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, guys.